Iron Dome, Hebrew, Kippet Barzel, is a mobile all-weather air defense system developed by Rafael Advanced Defense Systems and Israel Aircraft Industries. The system is designed to intercept and destroy short-range rockets and artillery shells fired from distances of 4 km, 2.5 miles, to 70 km, 43 miles, away and whose trajectory would take them to a populated area. Israel hopes to increase the range of Iron Dome's interceptions, from the current maximum of 70 km, 43 miles, to 250 km, 160 miles, and make it more versatile so that it could intercept rockets coming from two directions simultaneously. Iron Dome was declared operational and initially deployed on March 27, 2011 near Beersheba. On April 7, 2011, the system successfully intercepted a BM-21 Grad launched from Gaza for the first time. On March 10, 2012, the Jerusalem Post reported that the system shot down 90% of rockets launched from Gaza that would have landed in populated areas. By November 2012, official statements indicated that it had intercepted 400-plus rockets. By late October 2014, the Iron Dome systems had intercepted over 1,200 rockets. In addition to their land-based deployment, Iron Dome batteries will in the future be deployed at sea, where they will protect offshore gas platforms in conjunction with Israel's Barak-8 missile system. Iron Dome is part of a future multi-tiered missile defense system that Israel is developing, which will also include Arrow 2, Arrow 3, Iron Beam, Barak-8 and David Sling as early as 2018. Background Hezbollah, based in Lebanon, fired rockets into northern Israeli population centers in the 1990s, posing a security challenge for the Israel Defense Forces. Israel had floated the idea of its own short-range anti-missile system, but American defense officials cautioned that it would be doomed to fail. In 2004, the idea for Iron Dome gained momentum with the installation of BRIG General Daniel Gold as the head of the Research and Development Bureau of the Israel Defense Forces, IDF. Gold was a strong backer of the anti-missile project, even skirting army contracting regulations to secure financing. He also helped persuade key politicians to support the project. During the 2006 Second Lebanon War, approximately 4,000 Hezbollah-fired rockets, the great majority of which were short-range Kadiusha rockets, landed in northern Israel, including on Haifa, the country's third-largest city. The rocket barrage killed 44 Israeli civilians and caused some 250,000 Israeli citizens to evacuate and relocate to other parts of Israel while an estimated 1 million Israelis were confined in or near bomb shelters during the conflict. To the south, more than 8,000 projectiles, estimated at 4,000 rockets and 4,000 mortar bombs, were fired indiscriminately into Israeli population centers from Gaza between 2000 and 2008, principally by Hamas. Almost all of the rockets fired were Qassams launched by 122mm Grad launchers smuggled into the Gaza Strip, giving longer range than other launch methods. Nearly a million Israelis living in the south were within rocket range posing a serious security threat to the country and its citizens. In February 2007, Defense Minister Amir Peretz selected Iron Dome as Israel's defense against this short-range rocket threat. Since then, the 210 million US, system has been developed by Rafael Advanced Defense Systems working jointly with the IDF. Etymology Project leader Colonel S. and his team in the Administration for the Development of Weapons and Technological Infrastructure, MAFAT, had very little spare time, and only on the weekends could they think of an appropriate name for the system. According to Colonel S., the first name I thought of was anti Qasam, but when the project started to move forward I realized it was problematic. I sat down with my wife, and together we thought of suitable names. She suggested the name Tamir. Hebrew acronym for, Til Miyarat, Interceptor Missile, for the missile, and for the system itself we thought of Golden Dome. The following Sunday, Tamir was immediately approved, but there was a problem with Golden Dome it could be perceived as ostentatious. So it was changed to Iron Dome. Specifications 
the system is designed to counter short-range rockets and 155mm artillery shells with a range of up to 70 km. According to its manufacturer, Iron Dome will operate day and night, under adverse weather conditions, and can respond to multiple threats simultaneously. Iron Dome has three central components. Detection and tracking radar, the radar system is built by ELTA, an Israeli defense company and subsidiary of Israel Aerospace Industries, and by the IDF. Battle Management and Weapon Control, BMC The control center is built for Rafael by Impressed Systems, an Israeli software company. Missile Firing Unit, the unit launches the Tamir Interceptor Missile, equipped with electro-optic sensors and several steering fins for high maneuverability. The missile is built by Rafael. The system's radar is referred to as L-M2084. It detects the rocket's launch and tracks its trajectory. The BMC calculates the impact point according to the reported data, and uses this information to determine whether the target constitutes a threat to a designated area. Only when that threat is determined, is an interceptor missile fired to destroy the incoming rocket before it reaches the predicted impact area. Comparison to a typical battery the typical air defense missile battery consists of a radar unit, missile control unit, and several launchers, all located at the same site. Conversely, Iron Dome is built to deploy in a scattered pattern. Each launcher, containing 20 interceptors, is independently deployed and operated remotely via a secure wireless connection. Reportedly, each Iron Dome battery is capable of protecting an urban area of approximately 150 square kilometers. Funding The initial funding and development of the Iron Dome system was provided and undertaken by Israel. This allowed for the deployment of the first two Iron Dome systems. Subsequently, funding for an additional eight Iron Dome systems along with funding for a supply of interception missiles is currently being provided by the United States with two of these additional systems having been delivered by 2012. Funding for the production and deployment of these additional Iron Dome batteries and interceptor missiles was approved by the United States Congress, after being requested by President Obama in 2010. In May 2010, the White House announced that U.S. President Barack Obama would seek $205 million from U.S. Congress in his 2011 budget to spur the production and deployment of additional Iron Dome batteries. White House spokesman Tommy Vitter stated, the president recognizes the threat missiles and rockets fired by Hamas and Hezbollah pose to Israelis, and has therefore decided to seek funding from Congress to support the production of Israel's short-range rocket defense system called Iron Dome. This would be the first direct U.S. investment in the project. Such financial assistance could expedite the completion of the defensive system, which has long been delayed by budgetary shortfalls. A few days later, on May 20, 2010, the U.S. House of Representatives approved the funding in a 4-10-4 vote. The bill, the United States-Israel Missile Defense Cooperation and Support Act, H.R. 5327, was sponsored by Rep. Glenn C. Nye of Virginia. This money was expected to be included in the 2011 budget. Once the money was received in 2011, it still took a further 18 months before the additional batteries were delivered to the Air Force. On May 9, 2011, Haaretz published that Defense Ministry Director General Major General, Res. Hadi Shani said that Israel plans to invest nearly $1 billion in the coming years for the development and production of Iron Dome batteries. We are no longer approaching this in terms of initial operational capabilities but are defining the final target for absorbing the systems, in terms of schedule and funds. We are talking about 10-15 Iron Dome batteries. We will invest nearly $1 billion on this. This is the goal, in addition to the $205 million that the U.S. government has authorized, Shunny said. On April 4, 2012, Reuters reported that a senior Israeli official, during a briefing to a small group of journalists on condition of anonymity, predicted an increased interception range of up to 250 km, as well as more flexible aiming of Iron Dome units, thus lowering the number of batteries needed for full deployment in Israel. 
that would help Israel to cope with the prospect of reduced funding from the United States, while a new round of talks about missile defense funding would be completed in two to three months, he anticipated. While praising American largesse, the official said U.S. planners have asked Israel to point out honestly where the upper limit is in terms of what can be implemented with the Iron Dome. He said the U.S. is deep in, fiscal, challenges itself, so it does not want to give money for the sake of it. In exchange for the second tranche of deployment funding, the United States is asking Israel for access to, and a stake in, elements of the system's technology. On May 17, 2012, when Israeli Defense Minister Ehud Barak met with U.S. Secretary of Defense Leon Panetta, the Pentagon issued a statement from the Secretary saying in part, I was pleased to inform Minister Barak that the President supports Israel's Iron Dome system and directed me to fill the $70 million in assistance for Iron Dome that Minister Barak indicated to me Israel needs this fiscal year. On May 18, 2012, the United States House of Representatives passed the Fiscal Year 2013 National Defense Authorization Act, H.R. 4310, with $680 million for Iron Dome in Section 227. The report accompanying the bill, 112479, also calls for technology sharing as well as CO production of Iron Dome in the United States in light of the nearly $900 million invested in the system since 2011. Section 227, Iron Dome Short Range Rocket Defense Program, would authorize $680.0 million for the Iron Dome system in fiscal years 2012 15 and PE 63913C for procurement of additional batteries and interceptors and for operations and sustainment expenses. This section would also require the Director, Missile Defense Agency to establish within MDA a program office for cooperative missile defense efforts on the Iron Dome system to ensure long-term cooperation on this program. The committee is aware that National Defense Authorization Act for Fiscal Year 2011, Public Law 111-383, included $205.0 million for the Iron Dome short-range rocket defense system for the State of Israel. The committee notes that the Iron Dome system has proven very effective at defeating threat rockets launched at protected targets. The committee also notes that if the full $680.0 million is used on the program, the total U.S. taxpayer investment in this system will amount to nearly $900.0 million since fiscal year 2011 yet the United States has no rights to the technology involved. The committee believes the director should ensure, prior to dispersing the authorized $680 million for Iron Dome, that the United States has appropriate rights to this technology for United States defense purposes, subject to an agreement with the Israeli Missile Defense Organization, and in a manner consistent with prior U.S. Israeli Missile Defense Cooperation on the Arrow and David Sling suite of systems. The committee also believes that the director should explore any opportunity to enter into CO production of the Iron Dome system with Israel, in light of the significant U.S. investment in this system. On June 4, 2012, the U.S. Senate Armed Services Committee included $210 million for Iron Dome, in its version of the National Defense Authorization Act for 2013, S.3254. The bill has been reported out of committee and is waiting to be assigned a date for consideration by the full Senate. SEC 237, Availability of Funds for Iron Dome Short-Range Rocket Defense Program, said that of the amounts authorized to be appropriated for fiscal year 2013 by Section 201 for research, development, test, and evaluation, defense-wide, and available for the Missile Defense Agency. $210 million may be provided to the Government of Israel for the Iron Dome short-range rocket defense program as specified in the funding table in Section 4201. On January 17, 2014, President Barack Obama signed the Fiscal Year 2014 Consolidated Appropriations Act. The bill provides $235 million for Israel to procure the Iron Dome system. The Israeli government has also agreed to spend more than half the funds the United States provides for the Iron Dome system in the United States. 
funds going to U.S. contractors will increase to 30% in 2014 and 55% in 2015 from 3% previously, according to a U.S. Missile Defense Agency report to Congress. On August 1, 2014, Congress approved a measure to deliver an additional $225 million in aid to Israel, with the aim of replenishing funds for the Iron Dome system in the midst of the conflict between Israel and Hamas. Following the signing of bill, for which the Senate and House of Representatives as well as Republicans and Democrats set aside differences to advance Israel's emergency request, the White House stated that the United States has been clear since the start of this conflict that no country can abide rocket attacks against its civilians and that it supports Israel's right to defend itself against such attacks. Senate Report 113-211 from the U.S. Government Publishing Office, which accompanied text H.R. 4870, recommended an increase in funding for the program for FI 2015. The report calculates U.S. investment in Iron Dome production since fiscal year 2011 to be over $1 billion. Plans for CO production with the United States With the United States on track to greatly increase funding for Iron Dome, there have been calls for technology transfer and CO production of Iron Dome in the United States. Just as the U.S. and Israel share CO production of the Aero 3 missile system, with Boeing manufacturing 40-50% of the production content, there has been support in the U.S. Congress, media, and think tanks in favor of CO production. The U.S. House of Representatives included report language in its FI 2013 Defense Authorization Act supporting Iron Dome with $680 million but also instructing that the director of the U.S. Missile Defense Agency, Lt. Gen. Patrick O'Reilly, should explore any opportunity to enter into CO production of the Iron Dome system with Israel, in light of the significant U.S. investment in this system. There are media reports that the Pentagon is requesting similar language in the Senate Defense Authorization Act as well as the respective House and Senate Defense Appropriations Bills for 2013. Adding Iron Dome to the list of high-tech military programs built jointly by both nations would help further strengthen ties between Israel and the United States. In July 2014 it was announced that Raytheon will be the major U.S. partner in CO production of major components for the Iron Dome's Tamir intercepting missile. The U.S. firm will supply components through various subcontractors. Development Design In 2005, BRIG General Danny Gold, then head of MAFAT, decided to start the program that would include the system's research and a demonstration of the intercepting system. In 2007, Israel commissioned the development of Iron Dome, choosing Israeli contractor Rafael over the American giant Lockheed Martin. Israeli company M. Prest Systems was put in charge of programming the core of Iron Dome's battle management system. Iron Dome went from the drawing board to combat readiness within less than four years, a remarkably short period of time for a weapons system designed from scratch, according to military experts. There was no system like this, anywhere in the world, in terms of capabilities, speed, accuracy. We felt like a startup. Isle Ron, a manager at M. Prest. According to the leading developers of Iron Dome, due to schedule and low cost settings constraints, some of the missile components have been taken from a toy car sold by Toys R Us. Testing July 2008 the Tamir interceptor missile underwent successful testing. March 2009, Israel successfully tested the missile defense system, though without yet actually intercepting an actual projectile. July 2009, the system successfully intercepted a number of rockets mimicking Qassam and short-range Katyusha rockets in a defense ministry test. August 2009, the IDF completed the establishment of a new battalion that will operate the Iron Dome system. The battalion is a part of the Israel Air Force's Air Defense Division. The system was to be first deployed along the Gaza border and then along the border with Lebanon. The system was slated to start operating in mid-2010. January 2010 Iron Dome successfully intercepted multiple rocket barrages mimicking Qassam's and Katyusha's. Defense Ministry Director General Pinhas Bukras stated that the system would ultimately transform security for the residents of southern and northern Israel. 
July 2010, the system successfully intercepted multiple rocket barrages mimicking Kasams and Katyushas. During the test, Iron Dome successfully distinguished rockets which were threats from those that would not land in designated areas and did not need to be intercepted. March 2011, Iron Dome was declared operational by the IDF, and Defense Minister Ehud Barak authorized deployment. During the first stage of Iron Dome's operational duty, the Israeli Air Force included many soldiers from Stirat, citing high motivation among the city's pre-army youth to be part of the project. The 947th Marksman Stinger Battalion of the Israeli Air Defense Network was chosen as the first unit to become familiar with and operate Iron Dome. Energy Weapons Although Iron Dome has proven its effectiveness against rocket attacks, Defense Ministry officials are concerned it will not be able to handle more massive arsenals possessed by Hezbollah in Lebanon should a conflict arise. Although in Operation Protective Edge it had a 90% hit rate against only rockets determined to be headed for populated areas, 735 intercepts were made at a cost of $70,000-100,000 per interceptor, with an estimated 100,000 rockets possessed by Hezbollah, Iron Dome systems could be fiscally and physically overwhelmed by dozens of incoming salvos. Directed energy weapons are being investigated as a complement to Iron Dome, and are prized for less costly defense capabilities provided both in terms of system cost and cost per shot. Solid-state lasers worldwide have power levels ranging from 1040 kW, to destroy a rocket safely from 1520 km, 9.312.4 mi, away, several low-power beams could coordinate and converge on one spot to burn through its outer shell and destroy it. Because laser beams become distorted under fog or heavy cloud conditions, any laser would be used in conjunction with Iron Dome rather than as a replacement for it. In 1996, the Israelis developed the Nautilus prototype and later deployed it in Kiryat Shmana, Israel's northernmost city along the Lebanese border. It used a collection of components from other systems and succeeded in keeping a beam on the same point for two continuous seconds using an early prototype of the Green Pine radar. Nautilus succeeded in its goal to prove the concept was feasible, but it was never deployed operationally, as the government believed the cheaper alternative was sending in ground troops to stop rocket fire at their source. At the 2014 Singapore Air Show, Rafael unveiled its Iron Beam laser air defense system. Iron Beam is a directed energy weapon made to complement the Iron Dome system by using a high-energy laser to destroy rockets, mortars, and other airborne threats. Development of the system began some time after the joint United States and Israel Nautilus laser development program ended. In December 2014, former Israeli Air Force chief and head of Boeing Israel David Ivry showed interest in the American laser weapon system. Earlier that month, the U.S. Navy revealed that the laws had been mounted on the USS Ponce and locked onto and destroyed designated targets with near instantaneous lethality, with each laser shot costing less than $1. See Dome. In October 2014, Raphael unveiled a naval version of the Iron Dome called Sea Dome. It is designed to protect vessels in blue and littoral waters from ballistic trajectory and direct attack weapons fired in saturation attacks. Sea Dome includes a 10 round canister loaded with vertically launched Tamir interceptors for 360 degree coverage, a feature not supported by the land based Iron Dome system. The ship's own surveillance radar is used to negate the need for a dedicated fire control radar. The system has a small footprint to enable installation on small ships like offshore patrol vessels, corvettes, and even stationary oil rigs. Though in the very early stages of concept development, Raphael estimated that it could take less than a year to build a prototype Sea Dome system. Preliminary discussions with potential users have already been launched. The Sea Dome will be used on the Israeli Navy's SAAR-6 class corvettes. On May 18, 2016 Colonel Ariel Schur, head of Israeli Naval Operation Systems announced that the system had successfully intercepted and destroyed a salvo of short-range missiles while deployed on a naval vessel at sea. On November 27, 2017, the Israeli military declared initial operational capability for the Sea Dome completing more than 18 months of integration and design work. Counter UAV
The Iron Dome has been pitched to the IDF as a more cost-effective anti-aircraft system to intercept unmanned aerial vehicles. Some estimates of the cost of a Tamir interceptor are around $100,000, but it is still 95% cheaper than using a MIM-104 Patriot, the primary Israeli interceptor, costing $2.3 million. Although the Patriot has broader coverage, the low cost of UAVs and operational scenarios they would be encountered in would make Iron Dome equally effective against them. No material upgrades would be needed to optimize the system for drone killing missions, as this role and capability has been publicized from its inception. In July 2015, Rafael released video footage of Iron Dome interceptors destroying several low and high flying UAVs in a test. Although some targets were destroyed by proximity operated warheads, in others the interceptor achieved a kinetic hit. The company says the system is capable of destroying armed UAVs before they can get close enough to release their munitions, and most medium-altitude reconnaissance UAVs before they are close enough to survey an area. Other Uses In June 2016, it was revealed that the Iron Dome had been tested to successfully intercept salvos of artillery shells, which are typically difficult to destroy because of the need to penetrate the thickness of their metal casings to get to the warhead, and multiple air-to-ground precision-guided munitions, PGMs, similar to the Joint Direct Attack Munition, JDAM. Deployment The Iron Dome system began operating in early 2011, initially deployed at Air Force bases in southern Israel. It was designated to be set up in other areas, such as the town of Stirat during significant escalations along the Gaza border. 2011 On March 27, 2011, Al Jazeera English reported that Iron Dome has been deployed for the first time. Brigadier General Doran Gavish, commander of Israel's Air Defense Corps, said Iron Dome had passed a series of tests and reached its evaluation phase in the field. It was stationed near Beersheba, following two rocket attacks on the area that month. On April 7, 2011, after deployment as an operational experiment on April 3, the Iron Dome system in the area of Ashkelon successfully intercepted a Grad rocket fired at the city, the first time a short-range rocket fired from Gaza had been intercepted. According to reports from the area, the interception could be seen in Israeli towns near northern Gaza. Immediately afterwards an IAF aircraft successfully attacked the squad that had fired the rocket. Later that day the IDF stressed that the system, though operational, was still under evaluation. On April 8 the system successfully intercepted another four rockets. On April 12, the IDF announced it would accelerate the introduction of a third Iron Dome battery. According to Haaretz, IDF officials indicated that the security establishment intended to ensure that the third battery would become available in six months, instead of the expected 18 months. According to the new plan, launchers from existing systems would be combined with other components that had already been manufactured in order to speed up the battery's production. In that way, the first operational Iron Dome battalion would come into being within six months, with batteries that could be deployed in the south or in other arenas. Also according to Haaretz, the IDF was to finalize its long-term Iron Dome acquisition program nicknamed Halamish within a few months from April 2011, which would indicate the final number of systems to be introduced into the military. Israel Air Force officials estimated the number of Iron Dome systems needed to cover threatened areas as 13. According to Meir El Ran, a scholar at the Institute of National Security Studies in Tel Aviv, Israel would need a total of 20 batteries to provide adequate defense for its borders with Gaza and Lebanon. Such a deployment would require financial assistance from the United States, but he said that even in the original limited form, officially designated a trial period, the system was important. On August 5, 2011, the IDF redeployed the Iron Dome system near Ashkelon following days of heightened rocket fire from Gaza into Israel. The deployment came a day after Ashkelon Mayor Benny Vaknin sent Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Defense Minister Ehud Barak a letter asking them to redeploy the system. On August 18, 2011, four rockets were fired from Gaza at Ashkelon. The system determined that two were a threat and intercepted them, 
ignoring the other two which were directed at non-populated areas. No injuries or damage were reported. Defense officials said that Iron Dome would be redeployed in Beersheba. On August 20, 2011, while engaging with a volley of seven rockets fired almost simultaneously at Beersheba from Gaza, one was not intercepted by the defense system, exploding in a residential area and killing Yossi Shushan. BRIG General Doran Gavish, commander of the IAF's Air Defense Corps, said on the following day that we said in advance that this wasn't a hermetic system, adding that the air defense units were learning on the fly and improving the performance of Iron Dome while operating it. This is the first system of its kind anywhere in the world, it is in its first operational test, and we've already intercepted a large number of rockets targeting Israeli communities, saving many civilian lives, Gavish said. On August 21, 2011, Inet News reported that the success of the Iron Dome system against Gazan rocket fire had southern city mayors battling over the right to be the next to have it deployed in their area. The IDF stressed that no system can offer airtight protection and that the system positioned in Ashkelon was incapable of extending its defense to Ashdod, but this did not stop the mayors from pressuring the defense ministry and the IDF to position Iron Dome batteries within their city limits. Ashdod, Ofakim, Netavo, Beersheba, and Ashkelon have all pursued the system, but the IDF had only two batteries available. On the same day, the Jerusalem Post reported that Defense Minister Ehud Barak announced that a third Iron Dome battery would be installed in the region within weeks, and estimated that nine more batteries would be positioned within the next two years. In attacks shortly before, the Iron Dome system had successfully intercepted about 85% of the rockets identified as threats to populated areas by the Battle Management Control BMC, system launched at Israel from Gaza. On August 23, 2011, Globes reported that Raphael would invest tens of millions of shekels in the following months to open a second production line for the Iron Dome's Tamir interceptor missiles. Future operational needs as well as the plan to build two more Iron Dome batteries by the end of the year, necessitated the increase of missile production. On August 31, 2011, the IAF deployed a third Iron Dome battery outside Ashdod. Defense Minister Ehud Barak, who had said earlier in the week that it would take 10 days until the battery was deployed near Ashdod, praised the IDF and the IAF Air Defense Division for beating the deadline and beginning the deployment before the opening of the school year. On December 1, 2011, BRIG General Gavish said that a fourth battery of the system would be deployed in the coming months. He spoke to the Jerusalem Post ahead of the Air Defense Division's largest ever draft of soldiers needed to fill the ranks of its increasing number of units and battalions. The numbers will continue to grow and another battery will become operational in the beginning of the year, he said. On December 8, Outstanding Officer Captain Roatal Azan began to command the battery's unit in preparation for its deployment, the first woman to be in charge of the system. On December 6, 2011, Madan Vilne, the Israeli Minister of Home Front Defense, said that the Defense Ministry is considering AP. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.